There are multiple forms of arts like drawing, painting, dancing, singing, or even playing an instrument that some people use to express their emotions. The various art classes at Frisco High School help students express their emotions through drawing and painting. Students learn new art techniques from the basics to the creative and most complex. Well, I definitely want them to learn skills, develop skills and techniques and processes, but also express themselves, express their creativeness, have a creative outlet for them. Um, because, you know, a lot of classes are very structured, which is fine, um, and we have structure too, but they have the opportunity to express themselves. In Art 1, of course, it's going to be the basics, so just different techniques, lines, colors, um, color theory, stuff like that. But mostly that in this class, cre like creating stuff is the highest thing of learning. So he wants us to really just use our imagination and be able to get to that highest part of learning in this class. Before the assignments, he teaches us the uh, techniques and he lets us apply those techniques to our projects and I really like uh, applying them, learning new stuff and then trying it out. Um, on project days where we can just sit and we can just work on the project with like no interruptions. At first I didn't think it was for me, but after I found out what, what was for me, then I got into it and realized Mr. Jackson helped me find out what, it, what, what was for me. Some students discover talents that they didn't know they had. I enjoy it. I think it's real fun. I like expressing my emotions through art. I didn't, at first, I didn't think I would be good at art until I put my pencil to paper and let it go from there. Uh, I got interested in art uh, around fourth grade when uh, I realized that my sister was also really good at it and I took it from her. When I was probably about seven or eight, I was just really interested in cartoons and I would just always draw them and look at references. When I started drawing cartoons, I was able to develop my own style and I started creating my own characters and I became interested with them because I liked the concept of them and creating my own story. Well, I definitely recommend my students go to AP. Um, now, if they want to do something more three-dimensional, uh, AP 3D, or if they want to do something more two-dimensional, AP 2D or AP drawing. But when you go to AP, you're working within a portfolio, so a whole different context, right? You're researching more, you're documenting your process, and that's really how more artists actually work. If you're interested in taking a colorful class, we have several art classes to choose from. Even though the deadline has passed, you can still check with your counselor for future schedules. For RACC TV, I'm Raven Tielamanchili. A few weeks ago, Coach Owings and his IB math students put on their annual probability carnival. What better way to promote student engagement than to have students teach other students about probability? Almost everyone enjoys playing games of chance. And what's the purpose of this game right here? So we, are, we made our own carnival game so that we can uh, learn probability in our math class. So we're learning what, are, what we estimate the probability to be and what we actually get from people coming and testing it. How does it work? Uh, people will lift up cups and if they get uh, the pattern, then they get to move to the next level. And if they make it to the very end, then they get a prize. When you get to the hands-on activities, then you can actually see how it works in person and you can um, actually see like the actual uh, outcomes of everything. And uh, it's easier to learn that way because it's more interactive um, and realistic. Thank you. So our game is called Roll and Roll Again, and the purpose of this game is to roll dice to get a certain, amount, a certain number. In our case, for the first set of dice, we would get, need to get 14 or higher. For the second set of dice, if I can see the dice. For the second set, which are 20-sided dice, we would, need, we would need to get 60 or higher for the progress. If they get the first set of dice, they get a small prize guaranteed. If they roll and they get more than 60 on the second, they get a large prize. The IB math students develop various ways to collect probability data through the games. This particular game is designed to give you either a small prize or a large prize. Basically you get three tries to roll and depending on whether you get an even or an odd number, you move up three spaces or down three spaces. We're 
basically testing um, probability um, by rolling a dice three times and the calculations that we're going to do after are we're going to basically calculate the different probabilities of winning a small prize or a large prize based on the way that the game board is laid out. The probability of getting a prime number is about, I want to say 30%, and the chance of flipping the coin that corresponds with it is about half and half for each one. So we divided them in half, and I took pictures of half of them, and the ones I took pictures of were designated as heads. So depending on the prime number you flip, you have a 15% chance of winning a large prize, you have a 50% chance of winning a small prize, and I believe you have a 35% chance of winning no prize. Students develop probability games, so they've calculated what they expect the probability to be, and then their classmates come around and play these games, and then they check afterwards to see how well they predicted their probabilities of their games. So before the carnival, we calculated our theoretical data to what we thought the experiment would be, and then we get our experimental data from the carnival, and we compare them to see if our probability was right or wrong. Since Coach Owings and his math students have been putting on this event for over 10 years, the odds of having another probability carnival next year is at least 10 to 1. But there's always a possibility, however slim, that Coach Owings may decide to do something else. We'll just have to take that chance. For RACC TV, I'm Chris Sharma. Every year, the stars present their annual spring show. This year is special. We are celebrating 25 years of stars on Friday and Saturday, April 19th and 20th at 7 p.m. in the Frisco High School Auditorium. We're definitely upping the standard a little bit this spring show. We're doing a lot more like fun stuff and a lot of new videos so that'll be exciting. We're working on Opener right now, so Opener's going to be a good one too, so stay tuned. <laughs> Uh, spring show consists of all of our competition routines as well as special routines that we've practiced just for the show. They'll have all the officer dances and lots of fun guy-girl, dad-daughter dances. So we get to showcase all the stuff you don't see at football routines and pep rallies. I'd say some of our most fun events are the spring show event. Uh, it's so much fun. It's really just to showcase all of our dances. Less pressure, less like nerves than we have for competition. So it's really just getting to do all of our dances for fun one last time and it's always fun to do like our opener and closer every year especially because our closing is like a tradition here so it's a lot of fun doing that every year. Being a star is an incredible experience and the team is like a family. They enjoy working together. I enjoy most about being on stars. It's kind of the community we have. We're all super close and we all love being around each other. This is a big group just like my friends that I love being around and being able to grow together is just so special to me so it's very much a family. I think the biggest thing for me is the community that we've created on this team. It's been so special to be able to grow with this team throughout the years and get to know everybody coming in, get to know the younger classmen. It's just been truly a special, a special year getting to create such a close-knit group of girls. The annual spring show has always been a bittersweet finale for all of the stars dancers, adding to other memorable moments throughout each year. Personally, I think pep rally is the most like, exciting of what we do because there's no pressure and we just kind of get to have fun and dance and then we get to do it in front of the student body and our teachers, so I think that's also really special. My favorite events are pep rallies and competition season and spring show are the most fun since we get to compete the dances we've been working on all of off season that most people in Frisco don't get to see. This year's spring show celebrates 25 years of stars. It's hard to believe, but the Frisco stars have been performing since before you were born. They have put together a great show for this Friday and Saturday that is guaranteed to be another smash hit. The shows begin at 7 p.m. in the FHS Auditorium and tickets can be purchased throughout the hometown app. Just type in Frisco High School and the star spring show should appear. We hope to see you there. For our ACC TV, I'm Jayla. When you go to Chick-fil-A for a meal or to a nice restaurant with your family, most people don't expect to see trash on the floor or on a table. In school, individual students are responsible for the condition you find the cafeteria in when your class goes to lunch. Do you ever see people leave their trash around the cafeteria? 
I do every time, almost every lunch, I see people leaving their trash on the tables. I really think it's disgusting and you're making the, the janitors do more work than they need to. If you just pick up your trash and throw it away, it takes like two seconds. Like you'll see people just like stand up and leave like all their food on the table. I feel like it's weird and it's disgusting because like you wouldn't do that at your own house, so why would you do it here? At first it wasn't a problem, but now it's becoming a problem. Seeing that table, people are throwing trash around everywhere, which sort of sucks, but yeah, I'm seeing trash everywhere now. Everybody has their own little thing, and it's not even that much trash, and they can't even throw it away. And it's normally just like guys who don't care. I think it's not that great because it makes a really hard job for the janitors who already work really, really hard. And it's just pointless because it makes them work way harder. Um, I think it's really important that we pick up our trash because it's so disrespectful when we leave trash around and we know that there are people trying to help clean and make sure that for every lunch the tables are clean and it's hard to do that when we have an understaffed janitorial group of people trying to help out. The custodians are here to help you, the students, to keep the cafeteria clean. They are not here to bust the tables. They're here to keep the school nice and tidy and clean, but it's not to clean your tables. That is your responsibility. They have so many other things that they need to be doing other than cleaning up after you. Second of all, if you don't clean up after yourself, that means the next group coming in has to sit at a dirty table because there's not enough time to clean all the tables in between each lunch. Leaving trash does not go unnoticed. The condition you leave your eating area in is a reflection on you. Let's do the right thing and keep the cafeteria clean. For RACC TV, I'm Nicole Cucci.